My name is Emmanuel Boniface Kisika. I'm an assistant lecturer uh, in the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences, Department of Languages and Literary Studies uh, at the Open University of Tanzania. And I'm here to facilitate, to take you through this uh, literature course. The course title actually is Studies in African Literature. Studies in African Literature. And the course code is OLT132. OLT132. You are all welcome. Uh, studies in African Literature. This will be our course and we should actually make sure we understand it. Make sure we understand it. So through, uh, before we, we, we get into what, uh, what is uh, def the de definition of African literature and other factors, let us actually go through the course description as well as objectives. What do we expect from you at the end of the course? This course cover both African oral literature and the early development of written literature. In this course, you will actually learn and try to understand the origins and the historical background of African traditional literature. And this part will receive a very special focus because it is actually the backbone of the modern African literature. This is due to the, um, as, as I said, is due to the, to the reason that it is actually the backbone of African literature. It is the backbone of African literary studies. So at the end of this course, We'll, we'll be able to examine the differences, the different genres that are available in African literature, as well as examine the short story, poetry, and drama that are all written by African writers. Now, what are the objectives? What are the objectives? What are the objectives of this course? This course actually is will enable you to enable students like you. To, differ, to, 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 to give different forms of both African, um, oral and written literature. You must be able, at the end of this course, you must be able to differentiate between African, liter uh, African oral literature and the modern, Af the modern African literature. As well, at the end of the course, it will, this course will prepare you, at the end you'll be able to, to for more advanced lecture on African literature. It will prepare you actually, this will be a building block. And later on, you'll be able actually to cover uh, more about African literature in other advanced uh, studies. It will also provide students with general knowledge of continent through its literature. So at the end of the day, you will understand Africa in terms of its literature, African continent. You see, you can understand it in terms of geography, it's geographical, but also you can understand it in terms of um, uh, literature. It improves the writing, it will improve your writing, the speaking skills, the reading, the communication in general, because at the end of the day, you will read a lot and then gain new uh, vocabulary. You read a lot and you are required to write a lot of essays. So this is actually for the communication purpose. But as well, it will nurture the critical analytical skills. It will actually nurture your critical and analytical skills. Why? Because you are also at the end of the day in this course required to analyze, criticize, and analytically provide or examine a lot of materials. So at the end of the day also it nurtures the culture of reading among yourselves. So at the end of the day, because we love to, 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 to read, a lot of materials from Chinua Achebe, Bugiwa Thiongo, uh, uh, Shaban Robert, uh, Abraham, uh, Nadne Godman, Chine Uzu, a lot of writers. Um, so at the end of the day, you'll be able actually to, to nurture the catch of reading. So after that, let us actually get the introduction. The introduction. Now, I am not going to show you the whole, um, the whole um, uh, PowerPoint of this introduction. The reason behind is that I want you to concentrate on listening and be able to take some notes 
uh, very important notes rather than just copying what I've written there. So I'll be just actually lecturing here without these PowerPoints so that you actually listen carefully. And later on in other module, we will be able to actually present you with some of the uh, PowerPoints. Try to actually listen very carefully and also learn to take notes from this course. Learn now to take notes. Take the very important points you think are important. Listen to how I actually talk and stress on some of the issues. So introduction, an overview of African literature. Whenever you talk of African literature, there are a lot of prejudices, there are a lot of claims about African literature. And most of them actually claim that in Africa, literature does not exist. Why? Because literature itself means written. The word literature from Latin means written. Therefore, if you talk of studies in African literature, then there is a contradiction. There are a lot of contradictions on actually the existence of African literature. So let me tell you that African literature did not start with the coming of European to Africa. Why? Because people's literature is as old as themselves. Any people's literature, be it Europeans, Indians, any kind of people we are talking about. The origin of literature is usually the existence of themselves. Even the speaking we are talking about, even the, the, the culture of speaking, you see the speech is said to evolve from partly some genres of literature. African had indigenous literature before coming before the coming of the Europeans. You see, Africans had an indigenous literature before European came to colonize the continent and the tradition continues to thrive to this moment. So I need you to understand that. Africa had its own literature, had its own literature even before the coming of European. You see, the indigenous literature of Africa, the indigenous literature of Africa is all literature. Because literary literature, the literary literature, um, uh, I mean, the, the, the oral literature has this traditional culture of non literate. It existed, it, it has existed for so long, the indigenous African literature has existed for so long because the indigenous, the people of Africa, had no literary culture. Had no literary culture. Therefore, African oral literature manifest in different forms. You see, we have different forms where African literature manifest. And these forms include folk tale, folk songs, um, chants, songs, myths, regions, epics, proverbs, riddles, and tongue testers. These are various forms in which African oral literature, the literature of indigenous, manifest itself. Therefore, you can understand you can understand the first claim that we had of the notion of little, little, but we will talk about it later as we go on. In African literature now, in African literature now, uh, the narrative, the narrative and the point, there is no clear, uh, there is no clear cut division of genres between uh, poetry, drama, and the narratives. You see, in African oral literature. Although, the, that, 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 the, there is that line which is actually can demarcate the, the genres in modern African literature. Now, and now remind, let, 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 let me remind you that the modern African literature has a lot of these, you know, some element of uh, American, I mean Western, Western literature. So we'll talk about it also as we go on. So the modern African literature actually is encompasses a lot of these oral traditions. A lot of these oral traditions. See, it is actually 
an integral part, an integral part of what we call modern literature. So oral literature is is being practiced by Africans, and it is now actually encompassed in different mult medias, in different mult medias. You see, this oral or traditional literature is committed to memory. Originally, is committed to memory. It is passed down. Um, from generation to generation by a word of mouth. So all literature is committed to memory and it is passed by word of mouth from generation to generation. You see, it is passed by word of mouth from generation. Now the reliance, the reliance on memory, the reliance on memory, make this literature to continue to evolve with time. So an oral text changes with every performance. And mind you, performance is actually the, the backbone of oral literature. The backbone of oral literature. Literature, oral literature relies on the performance. And every performance is different. Every performance is different. So, the performance actually in all literature has resulted to what we call orality. Orality. Then, orality is this, the literature that we have today, which is actually sometimes recorded, it is actually sometimes written in different books that we read. All literature was and still is an integral part of African people. It's actually an integral part. It's actually an integral part. It's a very important part of African lives. It, was, it, it is in the song. It is manifested in the songs that we have today. The, we still have farming. We still have fishing. People are still hunting. People are still uh, uh, locally traveling. And they use these African, actually, tradition, African traditions, the songs, or other forms. So it, 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 it exists until today. It exists until today. A woman is, uh, sang in, um, as she worked, um, she also sang while she's pounding. We have this pounding. So a, a woman can actually see when she's actually doing her own home activities, cooking, pounding, or different activities, you see. Man also as well clearing the farm, plantation, preparing some palm wine and other. Unlike modern literature, that demand leisure and a formal education. So all literature is actually partly for all Africans. It is actually for all Africans. Children can sit down, listen to stories, but modern literature is actually relies on only the educated. So the Af what we can say is that traditional African literature is a people's literature. It is a people's literature. See? It is actually manifested in the songs, birth songs, naming ceremonies, initiation into different ages of girls, marriage, death, and among others. You see? And among others. African oral literature is very functional literature. African oral literature is a very functional literature, which catered to needs of the traditional society. This kind of literature, this kind of literature actually, um, becomes actually very functional because it, 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 it involves day-to-day -day activities of the indigenous people, of the society. You see, it is there in the communication of day to day it, to maintain health, to maintain people boundaries, to maintain community in general. One of the advantages of African tradition literature is that it is coercive in bringing people together and they share the verbal imaginative expression. It is actually very successful in bringing people of Africa together. In forms, of, in forms of poetry, songs, chants, narrative, and performance. You see? 
you have these kind of uh, narratives um, where you make people sit down and stories are told, songs are, 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 are sung. You have these initiation ceremonies, a lot of initiation ceremonies. If, for example, a good example is in Tanzania when you have these Zaramo ceremony, initiation ceremonies. We have our Guru initiation ceremony. You have Kuria uh, initiation ceremonies until today. Even in modern cities like Dar es Salaam, you have those kind of um, initiations. So, all literature is a literature which has its own aesthetic. So it has its own aesthetics. Aesthetics. So it has its own beauty. It has its own beauty. It has been actually changed, and in schools and other areas because we, we, it, it, because of the interaction with the West. However, we can actually still keep teaching the young generation the existence of African oral literature. We can actually keep teaching young generation on the existence of African oral literature. Let me tell you, let me tell you, there are actually studies which have actually denied the existence of African oral literature. Be, not only the modern African literature, not the modern, the written one, no. The existence of African oral literature. One of the, one of the, one of the, of the scholars one of the scholars has, has actually uh, claimed that in Africa there is no literature, poetry there is none, no line. See? So in this course we are actually going to 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 to, to a point to to try and attempt to show that those claims at one point they were not actually the the true picture of African oral literature as well as African modern or written literature. Now, written or modern African literature is actually relatively com young. It's relatively young compared to Western Africa, Western lit uh, literary uh, traditions. You see, the Western uh, literary tradition uh, date to a hundred of years back, hundred of years. While um, some forms of the writing existed in traditional Africa, as we know today, started in the colonial period. So, for Africa, writing forms, the written literature, came during uh, colonization. Though, we may actually also try to argue on the existence of writing before the arrival of Westerners. We may actually try to argue and present the evidence that a writing was actually came early in Africa, existed early in Africa before even the coming of the West. But this is not the subject today. We are just trying to actually um, concentrate on our cause, on our especially African literature, and try to understand so, um, let, uh, the product of those schools, you see, the colonization, the product of um, actually colonization became the writer's modern Africa. Actually, this modern uh, colonization brought schools and people were taken to schools. And later, um, later on, it's where we find that it is from these schools that African writers were uh, born, were uh, born actually. While aware of Juan Latino, the only black Latin scholar and writer of Granada, Spain and also of Saint Augustine, Aurora Aquino and the film, wait, these Southern African literature were focused on modern African literature, modern African literature since colonization. In other words, the course will deal with literature, will deal with African literature as post-colonial, literature. So uh, we can agree that at the end of the day that the modern African literature actually is uh, what we call an hybrid, an hybrid of African traditional literature and partly Western tradition. Uh, in this course we are also aware of other literature.
by Africans. You know, the north part of Africa is occupied by Arabs and we consider them as Africans and Arab, Arabs from Africa and therefore we will actually concentrate also reading. Not only the Arabs, we, the, the course also is related to Swahili literature, which is part of Africa. And Swahili is one of the, I think if it's not number one language, largest spoken language in Africa right now. So we will also look into the uh, publications that are published in Swahili, that are published in Swahili, mostly from 1950s. Now, this modern African literature, this modern African literature that we see today, is actually conditioned by four major factors. Remember, it is conditioned by four major factors. One, number one, is traditional oral literature. As we were speaking about it, I told you a lot about oral literature. Now, the condition number one, the factor number one that conditions African literature is African oral tradition or oral literature. Number two, what shapes this Africa, the condition by, uh, of African literature is African history. As we all know, at one point, we were actually a very primitive society and then we evolved into some of the other historical mode but later on we were almost the whole continent was colonized see now the colonization of africa is also a factor that conditioned the african literature the other the other the other um, condition the other factor is the environment the environment and another one the fourth one is the influence of Western language and literary conventions. The, the last one is the influence of Western languages and literary conventions. See, we have different conventions, we have different languages. Mostly we speak French in Africa and a lot of writers write, uh, write using, uh, uh, they, they write in using French. We have English writers, uh, we have also the Portuguese writer. So we have the French writers, we have the French writers, we have the Portuguese writers, and we have the English writers of African origin. And we later on we will see how these are challenges in African literature, in defining African literature. So all tradition give modern literature, modern African literature, a cultural identity. Without these, there is actually a very big chance that African literature will actually um, submerge into the what we call universal, universal, you see, lose its own identity. So um, modern African literature adopting many oral forms, adopt so many oral forms. If you have read, I'm giving you an example. If you have read, things fall apart. If you have read things fall apart by Chinua Chebe, you will find a lot of proverbs inside, the African proverbs. You will find a lot of folklores. You will find a lot of songs. You will find a lot of regions. You see, you find a lot of myths in things fall apart. If you have read also Ngugi wa Thiongo, um, Ngugi wa Thiongo is actually using a lot of regions and myth in his literary works. So um, these actually play a very impact, integral part in, in modern African literature. And we call that, we, we actually, they are the factor, it is actually a factor that gives African literature authenticity. Authenticity, authenticity. In the literary work to be studied in this course, like the things for a part, you find the folk tale of the greedy tortoise in things for a part. There is actually a lot of proverbs in Sunjata and the other novels, plays and poems. 
the writer, these writers, African writers like Ngugi Wathiongo, Obi Wali, um, writers like um, Okoti P. Biteki, these writers have adopted oral techniques in poetry. If you have read Song of Lawino, you will find that Okoti P. Biteki has actually adopted Piwari techniques of oral poetry. See, so these writers have actually composed their writ uh, written work from poetry, from oral poetry, from oral narratives, from oral dramas that they have seen. Many poems are modeled on satiric of abuse songs, diggers, and praise chants. Ngugi wa Thiongo, among others, uses tradition minstrels and Gigandi prayer to tell the tale of if you have read Devil on the Close, if you have read Devil on the Close, and the dramatists include Femi or Sofisani, use traditional storyteller to present drama. See, so these people have been actually encompassing, they have been taking some of the techniques from African oral traditions and then encompasses them into uh, their modern writing. In fact, in fact, Abiola Ilele, Abiola Irele has described modern, modern literature, modern African literature as a written oral literature, a written oral literature. You see? Now, if you think of African modern writer, African modern, African, uh, I mean, modern African literature and Abiola Ilele hyphens of um, of a written oral literature, you can actually think of, I, I don't, but you can actually think of kind of an, an, an adaptation of oral material from African African um, literature into the newly uh, culture of writing, into a newly culture of writing. Now, many critics, many critics including Hilary himself and Jean and Emmanuel Obieshina have emphasized, they have emphasized on, um, on the point that of African responding to continent's history. You see, these writers, these philosophers, these uh, scholars have actually emphasized on the point of African literature responding to the continent's history. Ilele Abiola has actually claimed that he suggests actually, not a claim, is a suggestion. Historical experience serves as a constant reference for the African imagination. Historical experience serves as a constant reference for African imagination. Why? Because of the colonialism and European presenting Africa as others. See? Now, if you have read, if you have read some of the literary works that are produced by European, if you have read one of the, I don't know, let's say a great example, but not great in terms of greatness, but, you know, a good example of these European marginalizing Africa, displaying them, portraying them as others, is actually Joseph Conrad's Heart of Darkness. If you have read Heart of Darkness, my friend, if you have read Heart of Darkness, as an African, you reach a point and you actually question, you actually question the moral value of the writer. You don't even question even the moral. If you if you are too emotional, you will actually question either your existence or John Conrad's existence. And not only his existence, but his Western existence. The, how do you know there is this a different kind of depiction that if you read, you, you, you read the book, you find that Africans are like a half human. You see, a half human. So that is actually a very challenging. Now, that's why critique, like uh, critiques like Abiola Ilele, 
Emmanuel Obiechina, Jahens Jan, are actually insisting that African literature should actually serve as a part of the shaping African history. Should actually serve as a part of the shaping African history. If you have read Ngugi wa Thiongo, uh, I, I, I do like to use them because they are actually, you know, giant of African literature. I do like to use Ngugi Thiongo and uh, Chinua Chebe. They are, you know. If you, read this, uh, if you read from these people, all of their novels, all of their drama, you find that most of these, I mean not all, but most of, the, of, of these works, of their works, we find that they are trying to give you the other picture, the other picture of the image of Africa, the new image of Africa, unlike those um, Europeans. So this, this work is to, they, they enforce self affirmation. Self-affirmation, you need source of human spiritual values. See, you find yourself being African again if you read some of the work, um, some of the work written by. Even later, African writers will respond to the post-independence experience in the respective nations and society. So these people, these writers, these authors have not only ended in actually trying to respond to, to, to European, they also written about Africa after colonial colonialism and Africa that is actually ruled and um, under the leadership of Africans. So um, the imperative the imperative of history in modern African literature is affirmed by the fact that in many African nations, in many African nations, such as Egypt, Nigeria, and South Africa, the writers are divided in generations of period. In Egypt, there are pioneers. In Egypt, for example, there are poets of 90s, 70s, 80s, 70s, 80s, and 90s. In Nigeria, there are pioneers of poets, uh, uh, pioneers of poets, as well as poets of the second and the third, and the fourth generation. In South Africa, has apartheid and post apartheid writing. You see? So these, this, this kind of environment, you see, I'll, 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 actually, I'll actually take you back a bit and tell you about the, 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 these writings, these African writings have different environment, as we have said. In Egypt, there are poets of 70s, 80s, and 90s. We're talking about environment now. In Nigeria, you have pioneers of poets, as well as of the second, third, and the fourth generation. While in South Africa, you have the post, the, the, the pre uh, apathy, the during apathy, I mean, and then you have the post writing. You see? So the African environment, at the end of the day, the African environment also influences literature. As we expected, the fauna, the fauna and the flora assume symbolic significance in literary works. I'm, I, I'm saying the fauna and the flora, the, the, the animals and the flowers, the animals, the part of the, 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 non, the, the human, um, I mean the living things, the animals, and the flowers, things like trees, things like big trees, forests, whatever, assumes a very significant, a significant, symbolic significant part of African literary works. Plant such as Iloko and the creatures such as tortoise, hyena, and eagles are often evoked in literature for the symbolic meaning. You see, if you if you actually research in African literature, and I'm hundred percent sure that you are one of the uh, you have read at one uh, at one time or two, even a hundred time about these animals, about these um, bears. If you have read most of African stories, Swahili stories, 
if you you have you you, you were actually told of the stories in standard one, standard two, st up to standard five, you find that most characters in these stories, even in Swahili stories, are actually Sungula na Fisi, Nyoka na Kuku, Awafu, uh, I mean Majoka, Joka ni Kubwa. You see, these stuffs in Swahili, I mean the, the, the Joka means a big snake, when you have Haina, Sungula na Fisi, Haina and, you know, the tortoise, you have the tortoise, which is actually in a lot of our stories. So these fauna, I mean the African literature, is shaped with, by, by our environment. It's shaped by our environment. One can see the African worldwide and the sensibility as a product of environment reflected in the literature. So actually you must be able to see that African literature African literature is shaped by its own environment. That's why we have big trees, we have the setting in the forest, and the characters are somewhat animals. Snakes, chicken, hyena, tortoise, see? This is also another factor that affect or shape African literature. Now, the other factor that we have talked is the question of the use of language. African literature, as we have said, is found in almost three kind or four kind of languages. And if you want to categorize only two, there are works that are written in indigenous African indigenous African languages like Luo, Swahili, Hosa. Shona, any other languages, and these are indigenous African languages. There are literary works that are written in foreign languages, such as English, Portuguese, and the French. Now, in 20th century, in 20th century, in 20th century, emerged a very um, big debate on the question of language on the question of language scholars and writers including benedict ware Tivelas from africa from south africa obi wari of nigeria ngugi wa thiongo of kenya chinua chebe of nigeria and many other writers and many other writers debated on whether African literature should be written in, should continue to be written in, Amer in, 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 in European languages or should actually adopt African indigenous languages, our own languages. Now, African writers have made their choices. Some dwell or uses European languages and some have chosen to actually use their mother tongue as the language of presentation. Writers like Chinua Achebe, Wareso Inka have chosen and have actually argued that we would later actually Africanize the English that we have been using. We Africanize it, Africanization of English. We, 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 we change the English that we have into our own environment. You see, Africanize the English to reflect our values. And a good example is Chinuache. Chinuache has achieved that. He has been using English to actually present the Igbo values. The cultural background, you see. At a, at a certain point, Ngugi abandoned writing his fiction in English in nineteen uh, in nineteen eighties to write in Kikuyu or Kiswahili, and later his work were translated in English. But the question of language, you know, what is important? 
is that English is used by African writers, is informed by his indigenous culture, society, uh, society, environment, and individual experience. So at the end of the day, uh, writers should actually should actually choose whether if you are using an European language, then make sure that you actually present your values, present your societies, your environment. Since literature is a cultural production, it is actually dynamic and evolving. Therefore, African literature continues to change according to the time, according to the time. This fact of change leads to two important observations about contemporary African literature. One, the place of women and the influence of globalization and migration. And these two concepts that we are actually seeing here will be also a center of discussion in one of our lectures. For so long, for a so long time, the men expressed the African experience, but now we have women writers. What do we do with women writers? How do the African literature actually integrate women writers? So we have these challenges. We have these challenges. You see, women have been writing. Now, what is their place in, in, in writing? Therefore, there are so many female writers across the continent. So many female writers. We, we, uh, and they, 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 they lease their voices. While I don't want to single out any female uh, writer, it is significant to know that different, they have expressed different uh, women conditions. They have expressed their feelings, their thoughts on the way actually they want to be treated and the way they have been treated. So also immigration and globalization have been actually affecting, influencing African literature. There is a situation in the present, at the present with many African writers of not living in uh, North America or Europe um, and not in African continent. Africans are living in, 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 in Europe, they are living in America. So when they come back, they do have do uh, dual, you know, we have this kind of dual, you know, thinking, are you an American or are you an African? Or people are taken there, or they go to study. So we have these kind, all these have affected African literature. So as we go along, we will actually try to understand to understand actually um, the e the effect of this migration of these uh, of these people who are coming from Europe who are coming from Europe, but also not only coming. We have this globalization where internet is actually integrating everything. You can actually view. So how does that affect African literature? So African literature is ever growing and getting more diverse and the formal, and the thematical, and the technical expressions. There, are much, there is much experimentation in form and the techniques across the genre. See, there are a much what experimentation. We can actually try to experiment the forms of African literature, try to experiment the techniques of African literature, and comparison to whether the European or in our own assessment. So, um, Um, African writers, however, exposed still rooted in Africanity that bring borrowing with indigenous tradition for something unique, African and changing. They are much diverse of the themes. We, we, we are, writers do write, use, the, uh, I mean, incorporating different themes. So we can have what we call African, you know. Now, um, there is much diversity of themes as writers get bolder in their treatment of subjects. For instance, in the more recent African literature, there is to be a taboo. There used to be a taboo. At the same time, we are exploration of ecological and environmental subject as never before. So, at one time, we had this homosexuality as a taboo. See, but today, people are presenting it in their literature. We are we are seeing it in our in our in our in our, in our novels, in our plays. Now, these are the challenges of. Well, when we, we talk about the change. So, at the end of the day, before we actually conclude, we can say that in this course now, in this course now, I would like you to actually go through different uh, literary materials, 
but I would recommend, I would recommend you read um, Chinuuzu Madubuike, Chinuuzu Madubuike and others book, you read um, Okupeo, Okupeo's book on African literature, and as well you read Ruth Fenegan. But there is no single required text for, 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 for African literature. So you can actually go and, and visit and visit and try to understand what African literature is. So this is actually a part of an overview of African literature. Next time that we meet, we will be talking about the complexities of defining African literature. And apart from the complexities, we will also concentrate on the criteria of defining African literature as well as the views that scholars have on African literature. Different scholars. We have the Eurocentric scholars and we have the Eurocentric you know, kind of look and the Afrocentric kind of look of African literature. And from there, apart from, uh, from there, we can take on discussing about the different novels and their subjects and their themes. Thank you and you are welcome.